On today's episode, we're talking with representatives from Laurier Football and KW's The Lighthouse, specifically about why it's so important to build connections within your community, whether you're a high school team or a local sports team, and even for us at the, at the youth sport level. So just want to give you guys a quick chance to introduce yourself. We'll start with Laurier's head coach, Michael Faltz. Yeah, I'm Michael Faltz, head football coach at Wilford Laurier University. Tommy, you want to go next? Yeah, uh, Tommy Brenji, linebacker, Laurier University. So my name is Alex, and I am the ambassador for Laurier football. And I have Kyle at my side. He's a nice friend. And that's awesome. it. Awesome. Awesome. Kyle? Yeah, well, I first want to start by saying that um, your viewers might think the uh, the quarantines really had a hard time on, on me, but I always look like this. <laughs> so I had problems before the coronavirus even started. So. Um, but I'm, I'm Kyle, my name's Kyle, and I'm, I'm the co-director, co-founder of Lighthouse Programs, and we offer um, recreational and day supports for adults with special needs in the Kitchener Waterloo community. Awesome. So I think, you know, one of the, one of the big – reasons I wanted to kind of get everyone on the show is get kind of everybody's perspective on how sports can be a beneficial part of the community beyond just play, you know, playing games on Saturdays. So coach Falds, what about building relationships in the community is so important to you and your program and what advice would you have for whether it's head coaches or even just interested coaches on other staffs or trying to build those type of relationships? You know, I think as football players and football coaches, you get so caught up in your own life, your own training, your own coaching. But what you have to realize is how many young football players or young aspiring people in the community really look up to you. You know, if you're a young football player like Tommy, there's a lot of people in, you know, the local football community that look up to him and think, I want to be a university football player like him. And the same thing goes for coaches. So, uh, giving back to the community is super important for us, um, and we make sure we do that in several different ways, whether that's the Terry Fox run, whether that's uh, donating clothes, um, whether that's uh, taking part in the food bank, and obviously our relationship with the Lighthouse is super important as well, um, and that's grown over the four years. So kind of take me back. I know it's something that really blew up this fall, but, you know, being a part of Laurier football myself, it's been something that we've been doing for a while. You know, how did that kind of relationship start? Um, Because I think that's one of the the barriers for people, right? They're always, you might want to do some good in your community, but you don't really know who to ask, who to talk to. Um, I want to get Coach Falls' perspective and Kyle, your perspective on that as someone in the community. How did that relationship kind of start? And, um, you know, what advice would you have for coaches in getting one of those uh, relationships started? Yeah, some happen very organically where I simply get an email um, saying, you know, Coach Falls, uh, I would love to have some football volunteers at this this initiative. I quickly blast it out to the 100 players, and I'm always amazed how many, you know, reply back saying they'd love to help out. Um, With the relationship with the Lighthouse, it actually stems from Kyle himself uh, going to John Frost, a high school in Guelph, and myself being a John Frost uh, Royals alumni. Uh, So Kyle reached out when I became the head coach at Laurier and said, uh, now that you're the head coach in the community, uh, I'd love to start a relationship. And it's quite simply grown organically um, and kind of the media buzz and attention that it, you know, grabbed this year. um, None of that was planned. Um, You know, I think we have the mindset when you build relationships with the community, you just do it because it makes you feel good um, and you know that it's helping others. And obviously the cameras were rolling this year um, and our relationship um, saw national and even worldwide attention. Yeah, that's awesome. So, you know, Kyle, you played such a huge role in getting this started. What's kind of your advice maybe for some people who are, you know, not in the football community, but are looking to be involved, you know, in a football organization like like you've helped the Lighthouse get involved with Laurier football. What's kind of your advice for, for those people running programs like yours that, that want to create that connection? Yeah, I think it's about uh, just building bridges, right, um, to play where you are, to, to places out in the community and, and different um, realms of that. And, kind of where it all kind of started for me too. And I think there's always an initial a moment and then it's kind of a funny story, but at, when I was at John of Frost, so it kind of began in that building and, you know, the football team, they have a lot of social security um, equity kind of in the school because often biggest, strongest guys. And they're, 
you know, and that comes with um, just kind of its own thing, right? So when I was at the uh, school, I um, there was this, this guy, like it was kind of the, the kids from the special ed class would come down the cafe and eat lunch and they were kind of segregated. Like there wasn't a lot of um, cross crossing in between this kind of the social dynamics of the mainstream and kind of the special ed program. And there was just a guy wearing an Emmett Smith Cowboys jersey on that was in the special ed classroom. And I went over to him and said hi. And he asked me for a root beer, actually. And I love root beer. So I'm like, dude, you're wearing an Emmett Smith jersey. I'm like, why not? So I bought him one. And the staff there said, well, he might become a little obsessed. So maybe we can do this once a week. So I said, no problem. And so I started sitting with them um, at lunch, just having a root beer with this guy. And I would start talking to all the different kids and students in the, in the program there and then it was honestly the best time of my week they were funny and, and it was just opening the world or maybe I thought you know with some people that were a little different and maybe if I went over I would it would be nice for me and, and stuff like that but it actually had a huge benefit in my life because it was just open my world and that was the best time of my week just hanging out with these guys so it kind of opened from there and that's where I saw what football could do in the school itself because it was a huge cultural shift when and everyone's kind of started seeing like myself and other football players oh spending time at lunch with the special ed classroom, it just kind of opened up like there. And it was kind of like, um, I guess in Lion King, when, when um, Simba comes back and everything just opens up, the school just kind of became more of a welcoming opening environment for um, everyone involved. And it kind of snowballed year to year. And I know from, I went back as a staff later, a couple of years later, and that uh, integration between the special ed classroom and the, and the actual school just have developed and blossomed. So it's great when you see kind of what happens like that. Yeah, for sure. And I think there's so many, you know, stories like that, that don't get the attention that, that, you know, the, what we had happen at Laurier. Um, but it's so great. Anytime you can build those connections. And like coach fault said, it's something we'd been doing for, for three or four years. Right. And, and you kind of build that relationship and you never know what can come from it. So I want to talk to the two guys now that were, you know, really involved in, in the video that, that came out and went viral earlier on this year. Uh, you know, Alex, for you, you're yes. a huge football fan. Um, you know, you've been a, a, a big supporter of, of Laurier football and we see it all the games. What's it kind of mean to you right. uh, that the Lighthouse and Laurier have this relationship and kind of what's your favorite part of being around Laurier football? Uh, of the uh, part of the Lighthouse program and for the Laurier football. Uh, the Lighthouse, it's about doing things like the independent, cleaning, chores, and responsibility. At Laurier Football, it's about bringing the team like all together, and then they can lift weights and do all nice things. Yeah, and it's awesome. You know, we've we've gotten so much energy. I know those those training camp days that we've had you guys come down, and and it's it's so much fun for us as as coaches and players. You know, Tommy, you got to be involved in you know part of that uh, at the end of one of our training camp practices for you as a player. And and Lighthouse isn't the only you know thing that that we're involved in at Laurier Football, but specifically looking at that that experience and, and being involved with with this organization what's it kind of mean to you as a player to be able to connect with the community in that way so uh being involved with lighthouse is uh is really important to me uh it, it's really important to have community involvement uh it just it lets you know that football isn't everything uh it's more about being a person uh like when i met alex it was it was a great experience <laughs> honestly like that that end of practice it was probably like the highlight of my season just getting to be around Alex, getting to be around everybody in the lighthouse. It, it taught me so much about me as a person. Uh, yeah, it was just, it was a, it was a great experience. Like it's something I would love to continue doing. Cause honestly, I feel like experiences like that are more important than, than really anything else. Just being, being involved in the community with, with other, with others. It's just, I don't know. It's just, it's a major benefit for me and definitely for the whole team as well. Yeah, I think it brings a lot, you know, when because we, you know, we spend so much time, like Coach said, thinking about football and, you know, our mind is in the X's and O's and trying to get a little bit stronger that day. And sometimes it helps you to remember, hey, like, why am I doing this? And we all have our own personal motivations and things we want to achieve within the sport. But when you get connected to your community and, you know, you're going out for, for a game or a practice and, and you see those people there to support you and you remember how much, 
you know, fun you can have playing the game. And, and I think that that's something that's important, especially when you make the jump to the next level. There's so much time spent on football. It's it's really important, I think, that we find ways to to involve our community and keep our guys thinking about, you know, what what's really important. And, and it's those person-to-person connections. And the Lighthouse and Laurier is a great example of that. Hey, Josh, yes, we are. Can I type in with something? Yep, sure. Yeah, like, so it all, like, with anything, I think the ripple effect of it is, like, it starts with an idea, like, when I came to coach and – Mike and said, like, I have this one guy who just, I think, loves football, and we just connect. And then, you know, Mike really opened up the playbook by offering more stuff. And then when that kind of harmonizing happens, right, you see kind of where it goes. And I think the one thing I've learned from this, and maybe Mike's learned from this or anyone else, that there's a lot of unwarranted gratitude that comes to this. Like, people are like, oh, it's so amazing, and you're doing this and that. But when you really spend time with our group and our guys and our population, you know, it's you realize it's just as fun as hanging out with anyone else. And and how much they kind of teach you and stuff. And and kind of one quick story I have from that is I was uh, a couple years ago, I was in uh, BC and doing a zip line in Whistler and we're going up. So it's just a bunch of like 24, five year old guys. So the tour guys were these two Australian guys and they were kind of trying to scare us a bit. So they were pretending like this accident might happen. They were like, Oh, we had this, we couldn't have cell phones in case they fell out. So they're like, yeah, someone died last week on the, on the zip line. And, you know, hopefully if it's fixed by now and all this stuff. And he said, as we're going up, he's like, you know, it's a good time to reminisce. Why don't you go through and think about all the people in your life? And so he went around. He's like, who's the funniest person you've ever met? And without hesitation, it was like this one guy in the pro- um, program I worked with one time. And it was like, who's the most determined person you've ever met? And there happened to be all people with special needs. So all these great qualities of these words I was thinking about without forcing it, I wasn't trying to impress anyone. It just naturally was all these people that m- someone might look at with a disability that maybe is unfortunate. But they all possessed these qualities that I really thought were great. And they were like number one in all of the, when I went around and thought about it. So you kind of, I don't know, Mike made a way on that, but you kind of, the more time you spend with it, the more you realize it's, it's like there's an equal playing field, right? And it's just about, like Alex is a great dancer, as some of the Laurie football players have learned, right? So it's like, it's not like he's a good dancer just with special needs. He's just a good dancer, right? So the more time you spend with our guys, the more I think your players and your coaches probably have learned that. And I'd echo yeah, that. I'd, I'd say just in closing that, you know, part of the reason we get the Lighthouse and Alex and Kyle and the whole organization to come in training camp is training camp as a football player tends to be a time where you start to feel sorry for yourself. You're up at 6 a.m. every day. You have two practices. You're tired physically and mentally. Um, the, the morning practice that we bring out, you know, representatives from the Lighthouse and Alex, um, all of a sudden our players realize I'm not tired anymore. I'm not sore anymore. I just see these young adults out there smiling, loving life. Um, and it creates a sense of energy for our players. And the other thing to echo Kyle's comments is that every single you know time where we have a volunteer opportunity, I'm emailing out and asking guys, you know, can you do this? Can you do that? Um, I will say, you know, without hesitation that the recent times that we've asked for guys to go to lunch at the lighthouse or just any interaction with the lighthouse, we're getting more than ever um, guys wanting to volunteer because ultimately they want to just hang out with these young adults um, who really inspire them and create, you know, a new sense of energy. Last year, Kyle and I thought together it'd be kind of cool to have Alex's name on our website and our coaching staff. So what we did last year is we added Kyle or uh, Alex to the staff as a community ambassador. As yes, you see on the video right. today, he's always wearing his football hat and t-shirt and uh, he's a great representative of our coaching staff. Awesome. It's really nice to be one, to be like one. Yeah. Well, it's great to have, you know, and we've, we've had so much fun, you know, on our, on our side of this, uh, you know, as coaches and players and, and being able to be involved, not just with you, Alex, but with the whole Lighthouse crew. So thanks very much for you guys coming on and talking to other coaches about that. Um, right. And, and we can't wait to have our next event once we can all get back out there together.